Yes. Oh, scary. Why haven't you checked the children? It all began with a scream over 911. Good evening, Slasher fans. You're here, as always, with a brand new episode of Slasher Studios Horror Podcast. I am joined with my co-host, Andrew. Andrew, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, not too bad. Can't complain. So, um, I know in the last week you've gotten some new horror movies. Have you had a chance to watch anything um, new lately? Well, I have. um, Hopefully my Screen Factory copy of Cherry Falls will come in tomorrow so I can report back about that. But um, I, in the last week, I have watched not a whole lot, but I mean, just three of them. Um, not really a, a horror movie per se, but uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. It's uh, 80s um, style kind of action, gory movie called Turbo Kid, which I know a lot of other people have been raving about, and I'm late for the party, but I was really, really like impressed with it. I kind of knew nothing about it and watched it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how um, how I kind of viewed it, just like, I've only seen the trailer, so I don't have a whole lot to go on, but it seems almost kind of like a post-apocalyptic detention. Yeah. It's kind of like Mad Max, only um, it's like BMX kids instead of... Uh, you know, Cars and Mel Gibson. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I've been wanting to check that out, and I saw this on Netflix, so I will definitely be watching that soon. Um, have you watched anything else lately? Well, I did get my Synapse copy of Tenebrae, which I watched for the first time at my parents' house, um, and I can't believe it took me this long to see this. I mean, it's it's very Argento-ish. It's very stylish. Um, there's a lot of really cool camera tricks. There's one where it starts like on one side of the house and goes up and over the house and then around the back, all one continuous like crane shot. There's a lot of really good stuff in it. Um, I'm really excited to rip into the documentary and stuff on there. The, the transfer is beautiful. So I, I definitely, definitely like Tenebrae. It's not my favorite Argento that still is probably Deep Red followed by Suspiria, but Tenebrae is pretty high up there. And then I finally finished the Paranormal Activity series with Paranormal Activity Ghost Dimension. How was that? Sucks! (laughs) Is is it the worst of the series? uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the actors are all fine in it. It seems like, like, throughout the series, the one thing I always felt the series got better is, like, the first movie, Katie and Mika are very unlikable. The second movie, the family is very hit or miss. Third movie, you like them more. Fourth movie, you like them more. Fifth movie, like, you just progressively, they made likable characters as the movies go on instead of, usually, I mean, it starts off with, the first couple movies, you really like them, and then they just kind of make them dumb to kill them off. But this one, I mean, they were fine. It was a little ridiculous because it's just like, oh, and also staying with us is is my brother and then my wife's friend who is a yoga practitioner who's here for a yoga retreat that she never goes to. And, oh, she happens to know all about demonic possession and hauntings and spirit. Like, it was just a little too... Hackneyed. Is that the right word? Am I thinking the right word? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hackneyed. And then, and then, like their whole selling point was, you finally get to see the monster. Yeah, it just looks like a CGI ghost cloud from House on Haunted Hill, kind of. It's just, it, it was very unimpressive, especially for being the finale. I mean, there's no real callbacks to original films. I mean, there, there's no 
like appearance of Katie or any of the people that were in the other films, like to try to bring it full circle. If it's the big finale, why are we just meeting these people right now? They should have been around. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I was very. Uh, an yeah, I kind of think that was one of those kind of movies that, uh, yeah, I mean, Paramount just kind of gave up on. I mean, for those of you guys who haven't, like, been caught up on, like, the news of that movie, but, like, when I came to theaters, like, a bunch of theaters um, refused to play it because they were doing kind of the VOD release shortly afterwards, and they said that was going to cut into sales, and... I mean, when it really comes down to it, I think that both the theater no- owners as well as Paramount kind of knew, like, yeah, this movie's not very good, and we know it's not going to do very well, so we don't really care. Yeah. Well, and the sad thing was is it did do pretty well. <laughs> like, Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they make these movies on a budget of $5. So, I mean, really, it's pretty much all profit for them. So yeah, yeah, it was I mean, just a shame too. because the it, the the first one I know a lot of people don't really care for it, but it really really was like something new and fresh and creepy and it's it's I don't know it it was just it was a it was kind of like um, Saw 3D how they have this big buildup of a series and then the end you're just kind of like what the hell was this what is that. This is dumb. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to talk about Saw 3D because I haven't seen the, the final um, chapter of Paranormal it's Activity. So and what, <laughs> what frustrated me with Saw 3D, and that wasn't even a movie that I hated. Like, I thought it was, I don't know, it, it could have been a lot worse, which says a lot for the horror genre. But it had a really good premise of this guy who's this author who pretended to be a part of, you know, one of Jigsaw's trap and made money off of it. And he's kind of forced to go through this himself, like for real. I thought that premise was really good. I thought the execution was kind of lackluster. Um, but there was like interesting elements to that, but I completely agree with you. Um, kind of the the ending of the hat is just like, okay, well, I guess, like, who cares? <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of, like, um, okay. <laughs> like, what, 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 what is that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's just, like, I think that both kind of the Paranormal Activity series as well as the Saw series kind of seared off track was that there's only so much backstory you can go in. And when you keep adding and adding and adding, I mean, you know, there there are people out there, you know, that complain that, you know, every Friday the 13th is the same movie. Well, it's because you can't add all of these layers with each film because it just becomes a horror movie soap opera, which is pretty much what both of those series really became. Well, and then add in the fact that these movies are Paramount's cash cow, but they don't want to spend any money on them. I mean, if you look, if you listen or watch the uh, Crystal Lake Memories documentary, like there's so many times in the later sequels where they're like, oh, yeah, we had this really great idea and this really great idea. And there was some suit on set with a red pen going too much. Nope. And it's just kind of like you you can't blame the filmmakers. They were trying. What happens is the studio wants to make all the money, but they don't want to put anything into it. And I mean, generally the, the, the horror genre has a hard time with big finales. I mean, Freddy's dead. The final nightmare is to me, the worst of the series. Jason goes to hell the final Friday, which is not the final Friday, but it's was supposed to be the big finale is the worst of the series for me. Um, Scream 3 was supposed to be this big finale and it's the worst of the series for me. I mean, it just kind of it seems like they blow their load early on and then when they're like, oh, well, we have to make this giant ending for the movie, they don't know what to do, so they completely rewrite history. I mean, Freddy is married with a kid or like 
Jason has a sister that nobody knew about. And it just kind of like, it, it just kind of gets to the point where you're like, God, do these people even watch the movies? Like, did they try at all? Or are they just like, well, let's get a paycheck. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of throw all of that out there. And I mean, I guess like the one kind of, you know, I will, it's got a lot of problems, but I, I would say of those, probably Scream 3 tries the hardest to stay truest to the series. I mean, it's really ridiculous by the end, but at least that you can kind of see, okay, well, I can see where they went with this, but yeah, with the other ones, like, it's just like, okay, well, we're going to do something completely new and fresh, and that's going to be the family, but at the same time, we're going to kind of rewrite history of the series, and none of this is ever a good idea. Like, people don't like that. So, like, and no. unless you're going to kind of um, spin the wheel in a different direction, which, I mean, if we're talking about kind of failed sequels, it's not good by any means. But I will give, like, Blair Witch 2 credit for doing something completely different. You know, they could have very easily went the the paranormal activity route, which is just kind of, you know, do variations on the same movie. But they didn't, and they kind of paid for it. But at the same time, um, it's nice to see that because that's something that would never, ever, ever happen today. But again, they paid for it because the studio thought they knew better than the filmmakers and they completely re-edited it, added the music that was not supposed to be there and added a bunch of poorly shot gore where it's just kind of like, ugh. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't blame the filmmakers because I still stand by that. I think Blair Witch 2 is one of the more underrated um, horror movie sequels that I feel is a little bit Kind of, I prefer it over the original, much, much like um, Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. <laughs> yeah, and for me, I mean, I definitely prefer the original Blair Witch, but I, I think that with the sequel, um, you're completely right. Like, the studio pretty much, you know, really butchered it. Um, for those of you guys, if you own the movie, um, check out the commentary on the DVD. It's brutally honest, and for Artisan, um, you know, they might have fucked up with the movie with post-production, but I do give them credit for letting the director kind of tell it as it is because I'm, he's, he's, he's quite honest, and it's a good look into what it's like to direct or be part of a project, let alone a movie, where it becomes kind of at the end of the day, it's a product for the studio to make money. Don't count on any kind of artistic license. Mm -mm. We do have a little bit of horror news, though. I mean, a, on my end, um, Buffy <laughs> the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, turns 19 today. So that's always, always a good a good conversation for me just because you know, it was the best so 19. Crazy. I know. Oh. I mean, especially since I'm so young and I remember watching it on TV. It, I mean, it must just be, it must be wrong. It, it has to be. And then. Well, you must um, about watching it when you were like three. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Um, and then uh, we've got you, – you, you've got some news over party night. Yeah, um, some exciting news. For those of you guys who have been kind of keeping track, um, party night is a new kind of 80s-style slasher that's being co-produced by Slasher Studios. Um, it's got a really, really fun cast. Um, the script is fantastic. Well, it's on Kickstarter right now, and just earlier today, it met its goal. So it will be shooting um, late spring, early summer, um, Texas area. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, listen to the the previous podcast we did with um, writer and producer uh, Troy, and he um, will talk about he talks about the movie a little bit. So check out that and. There's still two days left on it, so if you want to become a backer, get some rewards. We also have some um, 
I donated some uh, Dismembering Christmas stuff to the campaign. So um, check it out. And if you're a fan of Slashers, you're, you're going to like it. And if you want some Dismembering Christmas goodies, here's a chance to get it, as well as kind of support a new Slasher. Yep, I, I'm I'm happy to say that I backed it. I mean, throw me any kind of limited edition Blu-ray my way, and that, that's that tends to be like my selling point where I'm like limited edition. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of a crazy thing too. I mean, I guess until we did this memory Christmas, I didn't realize just how big Blu-ray was with the horror community. Um, we sold out of um, the Blu-rays uh, about a week ago, and like mm-hmm. they're completely gone now. And like it's just insane. Like I, I never would have thought that it kind of would have been that kind of like instant demand. But that's awesome. And thank you guys for uh, checking out the film and supporting it. It means a lot. So um, yeah. So thank you. Yeah. It's it's been a it's been a, a wild ride. I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, I'm I'm excited too, and um, it's funny too. Um, we just sold uh, Jonathan uh, onesie the other day to a big fan, and uh, Jonathan's going to be coming over sometime in the next week to sign the crotch. So that'll be fun. We'll make sure to get some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, that's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's nice to know even though we have small movies that we have diehard fans of our cast. <laughs> oh, for sure. And that's um that donation for that onesie um got us four film festival submissions that we will cross fingers um hopefully get into. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, just really, really good, exciting news for indie slashers this week. So, pretty pumped about that. Um, I guess we can jump right into our show this week. And so, this week, we're going to be talking about um, cursed movie productions, movie sets, um, pretty much kind of horror movies that, like, the you know, to, to steal the, the tagline um, from New Nightmare, you know, the terror didn't end at the screen. Like, you know, kind of, I guess New Nightmare is kind of like a fictionalized version of one of these movies come to life where kind of this weird stuff is happening to the cast and the crew. And, yeah, I mean, Andrew, is there one in particular that you kind of like to jump in and talk about right away? Oh, God, see, I mean... There's a lot of them as, like, when you first uh, sprung this up as the topic, I was kind of like, well, is there any besides, like, (laughs) Exorcist and um, Poltergeist? But there are, there's a lot of um, movies that have had very troubled uh, productions when it comes to, like, the... Subject matter. I mean, uh, I was reading a thing about The Conjuring, and there was a lot of uh, weird things that happened. Like, there was uh, weird claw marks on Vera Farmiga's computer, and James Wan's dog would growl at just empty rooms. And then there was, like this weird like wind and fire on the set and stuff. So, I mean, say what you will about not believing in the paranormal, but a lot of these movies that I was reading about when it came to being a cursed film set, it's all supernatural. So. Yeah, it's very weird. And I mean, when you kind of look at the movies, you know, another one, um, that I wanted to bring up that I really didn't know that much about. Um, and that's Rosemary's Baby, you know. Producer uh, William Castle was, like, accidentally poisoned on the set during, like, a very um, cinematic scene of kind of violence. And, you know, you kind of had, you know, the whole 
Manson trial underneath this and just, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it could be coincidence, but at the same time, you know, when you have all of this stuff built up on top of another, it's just like, well, I mean, did someone not not want you to make this movie? You know, there's got to be, I would think there's got to be something more to it than just that. It's just, it's very creepy and it's very surreal. Yeah, um, I was I was just doing a quick read about the Passion of the Christ, and during the filming where he did a sermon on the mountain, the the guy playing Jesus was struck by lightning, and the assistant director was also struck twice by lightning during the film's production. Like, what is what, what is that? Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like, how is that even possible? You know, it's very scary, kind of, because, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a big believer in the supernatural or the, the I am. paranormal thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be, at the same time, like, there's millions of things out there that we just can't explain, so... You know, it's one of those things where, you know, anything is really possible, and that makes it really creepy. Well, and my whole thing is a lot of people are like, well, there's just, there's no proof of the paranormal or the other side or what happens after you die. And I'm always sitting there, and I'm like, well, exactly. That's why I believe there is a possibility of ghosts and, you know, demons and stuff like that, because no one knows, like, no one has ever died for a long period of time and then come back to life to tell the story. I mean, I could be totally wrong and no, there's nothing after, after life, but at the same time, I mean, there is a lot of very unexplainable things and, you know, there's buildings that have strange histories that you, you, I don't know if it's your mind playing tricks on you, which it also very well could be, or, you know, you're actually seeing displaced energy. I mean, there's so much in the world that nobody knows about. To say, like, absolutely, there is no such thing as paranormal entities and stuff like that. I think that's just very close-minded. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I feel, too. I mean, I'm kind of looking at this right now. And, I mean, another one that's just very... Scary is um, something that happens um, after filming The Omen. Um, one of the assistants was involved in a serious car accident, and they were decapitated. Like, And for those of you guys who don't know The Omen, probably the, the most famous scene involves the decapitation. And, I mean, granted, like I said, that could be coincidence, but that's very eerie. Like... Well, and then um, with Rosemary's Baby, the the character of Hutch, um, he dies because of a hematoma in the brain. And then after the filming was done, the composer of the film died the same way. <laughs> so, I mean, it, yeah. it is. It's a lot of very, like... it's coincidental, but at the same time, it's kind of like, that's a little too on the nose. Yeah. I mean, another one that um, I always think about too, that I mean, granted it's not like a a cursed film set or anything, but um, something that I think is really kind of scary and kind of weird is um, for those of you guys who know the movie Heather's like, the main Heather died of a brain tumor. And one of like the famous lines in the movie is, you know, did you just have a brain tumor for breakfast? Like, and she says it like, it's, you know, granted, like we said, like if anything can happen and, you know, maybe this is all a coincidence, but that's weird. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, these, these things are coincidental, but just like I said, just it's odd. It just doesn't add like under any other circumstances, it would just be kind of like, Oh, okay. Yeah. 
that's that's strange. But when it's so specific like this, it's very like, huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I guess we can talk about kind of the biggest of the big that you know, if you're talking about her sets and her production, um, definitely the Poltergeist series. I mean. Dominique Dunn was strangled by her boyfriend um, shortly after uh, filming the original film. Um, there were two deaths um, right after filming the second one, and then Heather O'Rourke died after the third one, and weird stuff's happening on the set with Joe Beth Williams and the, the pool full of skeletons that she found out later were real skeletons, and um, just Ugh, Zelda like, Rubenstein's and, grandmother dying, and yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things too where, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to get like a real like special edition of those movies. I don't think that people really want to talk about them, and I think part of that has to do with just kind of you know, there's a lot of sadness there, especially the fact that I mean Heather O'Rourke was 12 while she was making Poltergeist three when she died. And, I mean, people just don't want to talk about that. But it's it's a shame because, you know, at the same time, you should be kind of, you know, celebrating their work because that's what these people did and that's what they loved. And um, I don't know if we're ever going to get that. I know that um, I think it was like maybe 10, 15 years ago, but um, E! released a really good um behind the scenes, you know, the E! True Hollywood story and Poltergeist. And that was really, really well done. And it actually, like, featured um, a lot of really good interviews. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes drama as to why that's never been publicly available. Um, I think the most that you'll see of it is maybe, like, a minute or two clip on YouTube. Um and I think that it was that a lot of the, the people involved said that, you know, hey, I will do an interview, but, like, that's going to be the end of this. I'm not going to do it again. Like, I don't want this to be something that's, like, you can air it on television, but pretty much, like, don't make money off of it later. And, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. You know, I guess the only people that really know are kind of the people that are involved. And even they probably have no clue as to why this all happens. Yeah. I uh, it's just yeah, the the Poltergeist series definitely has had a very long and I think I remember watching that E story. Well I, don't really remember. I, I, still, I still remember like there was one part in it that used to always make me laugh. <laughs> Because, um, <laughs> like, it was one of the directors. I think it was the director about part two, and he did this, like, this long speech about how he thinks this is all stupid and there's no curse. And then, like, this was Don Felder Rubenstein. And, like, also, she just said one word, and she said bullshit. Like, and I will always remember that. Like, I thought that was, like, the funniest thing in the world. Because they just, like, show her, and then, like, of course they can't show it. They can't play it because it's on television. So, like, they just show her for, like, a second, and it's a bleep, and then they go back to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Zelda Rubenstein. She was always a very, very interesting, who I always felt never got as much credit as she should have. No, I mean, she's one of those those actresses that, you know, she really comes to life in these movies, you know. Even in stuff like, you know, Teen Witch, where, you know, it's not horror at all, but there's just something very warm and very inviting about her that really makes you root for her as a character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, um, other kind of um, haunted film sets, um, there are actually quite a few of them. Not all of them are even horror, but um, I'll stick with a couple of other horror ones. Um, We talked about it a little bit. Um, You did um, about The Exorcist. Um, There was a fire involved. The entire set burnt down. They had to rebuild it. There was another... um, problem with electricity and they pretty much had to do everything all over again. Um, 
after the movie was released, there were at least eight cast slash crew members that something weirdly terrible happened to um, that involved their, you know, that kind of played into their deaths. It's just weird. I mean, you know, I know that, you know, Linda Blair, you know, there was like the scene where, you know, she was thrown up against the the bookcase and like even um, um, Ellen, Ellen Bernstein, like she like suffered some big, like, I mean, like they went through hell making that movie and not only just making that movie, just kind of the shit that everyone had to deal with afterwards. It's just, you know, if they had known all of this, would they still have made the movie? Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. You know, it's it's a groundbreaking, monumental horror film, so possibly, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, and this comes in the case of film in general, is that Supernatural or Haunted or whatever is, you never know what you're going to get or what kind of elements you're going to be up against. And that can be scary. And when you kind of add the supernatural element to that, um, yeah, it can be downright frightening. Yeah. I mean, even reading, um, there was a few things that happened during the filming of the craft when they invoke the spirit on the beach um, as they're, cause they had a wick, a consultant and so they were using actual like invocations while they were doing it. And like, like a big flock of bats flew down and extinguished all the can- uh, candles from their wings. And then as they were also shooting, like you can even see it in the film, the waves coming closer and closer to the candles. But then when you actually look, they're so far away from the shoreline and they said that it was only when they would start filming that it would start getting really wild and tumultuous. And then, like, in one take when Fruza Bulk is like, fill me, like, all the power of the film set just shut off. Like, just... <laughs> so, I mean... Yeah, it's... like, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's It's stuff that you're just kind of like, again, coincidental, but a little too on the nose. And at the same time, like, I mean, this happens for, like, all movies. I mean, even if we're just kind of sticking to just, you know, the horror genre, like, you never hear this about slasher films. Like, you know, they have their own problems with production, but it it is very, like you said, on the nose, where it's like, oh, like, these weird supernatural stuff are happening about these movies regarding supernatural stuff. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's creepy and it makes me question the whole, uh, ever trying to make a supernatural film. Cause I feel like we would, with my luck, we would end up being like, they were never heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's one of those things, too, when it comes to kind of dealing with the supernatural. And you, you mentioned it before, is that, you know, whether you're a believer or not doesn't really kind of even matter, is that, you know, even if you're a non-believer, which which I, I'm leaning more towards, but I would never rule anything out, is that, you know, we don't know everything. And there's a lot of stuff out there that just, it can't be explained, and, I mean, you can try to put a rational explanation on there, but you said, like, when you kind of put these layers on top of each other, you know, where does it kind of end when you have to say, like, okay, something's going on here, and, you know, is this really something we even want to mess with? Mm-hmm. I'll and strangely enough, these are the only kind of movies that really, really get under my skin are like ghost stories and like supernatural stuff. Not all of them. I'll, I'll admit not all of them, but for some reason, the, the unexplainable is always the, 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 the creepiest for me. 
Yeah, I mean, even, um, you know, if we're talking about kind of newer horror movies, you know, Ty West with the Innkeepers, um, he mentioned that while while they were filming um, at the Inn in Connecticut, is that, like, we, weird stuff started happening there. I mean, and he doesn't believe in the supernatural at all, but he's like, you know, I saw doors slammed by themselves, and, you know, TVs turned on and off, and, you know, the light bulbs kept burning out, and uh, the people on the crew were having very extremely vivid um, dreams and nightmares, and, you know, that's a lot. And when when you kind of have um, kind of all of that going on, it's just, it's scary. Yeah. <sighs> so now, do you think that with this kind of, um, I guess, supernatural kind of phenomenon with this, um, I mean, I guess, you know, we're kind of like looking at kind of it from two different angles is that, you know, many of these are supposedly based on true stories or based on real events, you know, the thing keepers, like that's a real hotel. Um, you know, is that something, I mean, do you, do you ever feel like there's kind of a line being crossed that, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily like a good taste, bad taste thing. Uh, just you know, uh, well, maybe this event happened in the past, and we're not supposed to relive it. Like, kind of, what are your thoughts on that? See, I don't, I don't think that you should ever stop. I mean, that's kind of what film is for. It's, it's the same thing with. I would say, like, any kind of movies about terrorism. I mean, I don't know how I got there from Supernatural, but <laughs> it, because it's such a it's such a touchy subject that I feel it's how people deal with it, making movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that about it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what you mean, too, because, I mean... You know, I'm I'm one of those people that like I'll watch like A and E or like I'll go on YouTube and watch like these like American Case Files where it's like oh like we're looking at like this this you know serial killer and you know even with like the Scream series like it mentions you know that you know we're kind of treating these psychos as celebrities which we I actually kind of are I mean we, you'll you'll know the names of these people way before you'll know you know a single one of their victims. And there's kind of, I, I don't know if there's something sad about that exactly, as it is just kind of a reflection on our culture that we're just very kind of curious. I mean, you know, that kind of, you know, it, granted, serial killers are definitely different than the supernatural, but it kind of, it goes very hand in hand in the fact that, you know, with the supernatural, we don't know why this stuff is happening. And with the kind of, you know, the serial killer phenomenon, we don't know why these people are doing it. So I do think that the two are at least somewhat correlated with each other. Yeah, it, it's... I don't know. It, it's just ridiculous. I can't believe people would... Um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Sorry, I... It's been a very long day at work. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I definitely understand. Well, I'm like, hopefully, I'm just going like, to bring up like more stuff with like. <laughs> now it's going to be like we talked about it. Like we opened up the box. Like, is there going to be like bad stuff that's going to be like we're going to have like a haunted like special studio set in the next one because we talked about this. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Or we'll end oh, up I like, oh, oh look, I got, this, happen, I got like, this great like, trunk in a thrift store, and it's... Like, it's funny, too. <laughs> I got this great trunk at the thrift store to be in the movie. Isn't it great for, a, a, like, a, a prop, and then it turns out to be, like, the the spirit box from the possession? Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things, too. I mean... You know, I'm I'm a big kind of pawn store person. Like, I just like to go and, like, look at stuff. Usually I just get movies and stuff. But it is very weird to think that, you know, every every kind of item out there has a history. And, we, you know, unless, you, you know, you made it and you've had it your entire life, like, 
that that item or that possession is probably going to outlive you and it's going to have a life of its own and that in and of itself is kind of surreal and very eerie when you think about it because, you know, there's, like you said, there's a lot that we can't explain and, yeah, I mean, I think there's a reason why these movies work and why people are are fascinated by them and why people are also fascinated by, by these kind of behind-the-scenes stories. So um, if you guys um, check them out, um, there's a bunch. If you Google, like, cursed um, movie production, like, we just kind of hit the very tip of the iceberg. There's a lot out there. And like I said, they're not just horror. There are a lot of really creepy stories. And... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that I'm I'm very fascinated in and I would like to know more about. But, yeah, I mean, I guess if there, there's kind of one rule of it all. is like never rule anything out because you never quite know what you're dealing with. Exactly. And then, like, you look on eBay and there's just all these listings of this is a haunted doll, this is a, you know, jewelry box, haunted, 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 and... I mean, people just snap them up, like pay big money for them. Like the 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 possessed box that the the movie The Possession was based off of. I mean, that went for like six hundred dollars on eBay, and it's just like, oh, I started like going crazy, and my hair was falling out, and I was losing a bunch of weight, and like my teeth were falling out, and I'm like, why would you buy this? <laughs> Yeah, I don't get that either. I think there's just there there's something about it that I think that you know even like the people that aren't necessarily into the supernatural, like I think that there's still an element to it that makes them kind of curious as to kind of what like or or maybe it's just that, you know, you have these skeptics out there that are like, Well, like, let's see if this happens to me because I don't believe I think this is a bunch of shit. And I mean, I think I think that's movie. exactly what it is. It's I don't think this will happen to me. I think it's a bunch of shit. I let's let's or of course the the biggest one. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, the worst that could happen, um, you just have to look at the Friday Thirteenth series. So that series is based on that premise. <laughs> Oh yeah, these other kids die here, but it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to my friends. Like we're fine. <laughs> exactly. So that's going to kind of wrap up our show this week. Um, next week we got a really fun episode planned. We're going to be talking about horror movie mistakes. Not mistakes so much that the characters made, but mistakes that were in editing. Um, just very kind of. You know, some of these mistakes are going to be bigger than the, uh, than others, but, I mean, you could pretty much look up any movie on IMDb, look at the goose section, and there's tons, and some of them are hilarious. Some of them are frustrating because you're like, why didn't anyone notice this or care? Um, I know there's a big one that I'm going to be talking about with that that we've discussed before, but... Um, yeah, make sure to tune in next week, Thursday at 10 p.m. for a brand new episode all about horror movie mistakes and yeah uh check out some of these cursed production stories because there's there's some good scary stuff out there so hopefully you'll be able to see yep. tonight <laughs> yep and then next week we'll also be uh the show right before horror hound uh unfortunately kevin can't go but i'll be there so just just look for the the, the crazy one running around yeah, yeah it's like I, I need a leash. Like, after I stay in that for like five years, I'm like, why can't, like, I don't know if there's a bigger Sleepwalkers fan out there than me. And then it's like, oh, yeah, it's like the one you're not going to, we're going to have a reunion. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. 